What's up Ithaca High School? Welcome to Lake Street News. I'm Cora Easton. And I'm Hannah Barden. Today we have an interview with the Spelling Bee Champions, a recap of the Oscars, and we celebrate Women's History Month. So are you planning on doing the um, Hairspray musical? Uh, I'm actually not going to audition for Hairspray, but I am auditioning for the next season of our GP. Hopefully that means School of Rock for me. Ooh, yeah, we'll have to look out for that. Yeah. <laughs> The Spelling Bee was last Sunday, and our very own Hannah Barnes' mom and other champions were victorious. Now Hannah is going to interview these champions about her, their Spelling Bee victory. Um, so I want to thank you both for coming in today. It's um, very nice. So we have Miss um, Rakus and Miss Barden. Um, it's Rakusin. Rakusin. Es you can call me Esther. Okay, well, yeah, okay, we have um, Esther and um, my mother, um, Karen okay. Barden. And you also have a son in high school, right? Yes, he's uh, in 12th grade. Oh, cool. Marty Alani. Right, I think I know him. <laughs> um, and then we had a third team member, Betta Fisher-York. Right, she was not able to come today, unfortunately. And her son is also a senior, Paul Fisher-York. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you a little bit about the event. Um, how did you guys come together as a team? Well, um, I've been um, on the team for Ithaca High School PTA for the last three years. And um, I, I think I may have started a team three years ago, and we call it IHSBTA. <laughs> and um, we needed two members this year because last year two of our members couldn't, uh, they couldn't participate again this year. So I put out a note on the um, IHS PTA listserv, and your mom responded, which is really fantastic. And then uh, Betta Fisher York. Uh, who was on our team two years ago said that she could also participate this year. So then we were a team. <laughs> well, it's really good. It worked out really well for you, I guess. It did. it did. We also had to raise a certain amount of money for the Ithaca Public Ed Education Initiative, mm -hmm. um, which, is the, which is the organization that runs the Spelling Bee. And um, luckily, we had two anonymous donors who were extremely generous who helped us raise the money for the event. That's really nice. It was. What did you do to prepare for the event? Did you do any like studying? Or? We studied. <laughs> so um, I probably studied about an hour, half an hour to an hour a day for a few days before the event. Um, I was especially focusing on words that I wasn't, uh, wouldn't use normally, such as words from the Dutch origin. I think you did too. Yeah, um, I found out about a website called Miriam Webster Spell It, which has spelling the words on it from a lot of different languages and some of these words are ones you've never heard of ever in your life. That sounds helpful. And they're very bizarre. <laughs> they are. I'm like, not even sure if they could be incorporated into a sentence very easily. Not easily. <laughs> like water zooey, <laughs> which is a fish stew. What do you think is one of the hardest words that you had to spell? Eidetic. We spelled it starting with an I, but it actually starts with an E-I, E-I-D-E-T-I-C. I'll get it right next time. <laughs> I think the really hard words are ones where you hear a sound and you think that there's a certain letter in the word. So there was another one called Rudebeck, or was it Rudebach? Yes. Rudebach. Rudebach. Right. So there could be a T in the middle of the word, but it was actually a D. Yes. So those That's are the tricky. really hard <laughs> words. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that you would be doing it again next year? Or? I would like to. I had fun, <laughs> which is really the point of the, uh, this whole thing, was getting um, the community to be engaged, to support uh, an organization that supports the teachers and students in this district. And um, it's worth coming back to. Is there any um, other, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other things you think would be important to mention about the event or you think you got it pretty well covered? Yeah, I mean, there were 27 teams in the event and wow. it involves a lot of community members. So uh, yeah. um, there are a lot of groups in the community and businesses that support the Spelling Bee because they want to support the Ithaca Public Education Initiative, the IPEI. Um, so it's a great community event. That sounds like really great. Let's spread the word. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks thank for you. having us. The Oscars were last Sunday, and with their recap of the event, we go to JT. Last Sunday, the 90th Academy Awards took place at the Dolby Theater in LA, where the show was broadcasted live on ABC and once again hosted by talk show host Jimmy Kimmel. 
Viola Davis presented the first award for Best Supporting Actor, which was given to Sam Rockwell for his performance in three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. All the Oscar-nominated songs were also performed during the ceremony, including the anthem This Is Me from The Greatest Showman, Mystery of Love from Call Me By Your Name, and Remember Me from Disney's Coco. As for the fierce competition for the top awards, Jennifer Lawrence and Jodie Foster presented the nominees for Best Leading Actress, to which Frances McDormand was called to the stage. The three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri star, who also won an Oscar for her role in the 1996 film Fargo, beat out Sir Ronan, Margot Robbie, and even Meryl Streep for her empowering performance. Gary Oldman also won Best Leading Actor for his portrayal of former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, beating out the oldest nominee, 80-year-old actor Christopher Plummer. And finally, the award for Best Picture. Addressing the infamous Oscar mistake that, made, uh, that was made at the very end of last year's show, Jimmy Kimmel once again introduced Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty to announce the winner for Best Picture. With the nominations including the audience favorite Get Out, the coming-of-age drama Lady Bird, and the war film Dunkirk, Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water ultimately won the Oscar, which earlier won Toro the Oscar for Best Director as well. In conclusion, the 2018 Oscars were full of laughs, touching speeches, and above all, a sense of positivity. Thanks, JT. March is Women's History Month, and in honor of the month, um, we celebrate the career of Pauline Frederick. She started working in a radio during the 1930s. She soon moved over to ABC Radio, where she was required to talk about stories like how to get a husband. She strived to work serious news stories and finally got to focus on the newly established United Nations. She was finally hired because of her work on ABC, thus becoming the first female correspondent to work full-time on a TV network. In 1976, she became the first woman to moderate a presidential debate. That's all for this week, IHS. See you next week. You know, today, I just woke up. <laughs> And I like said, this. See my no, instead of yeah. waiting on a good day, <laughs> waiting around, do ups and downs, waiting on something to happen, I just okay, said, Okay, see, like the camera. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs>